Welcome everyone to the City Council um, meeting for Monday, November 13th, 2017. If we could have a roll call to establish quorum, please, ma'am. Hig Adamson? Here. Terry McClung? Here. Vicki Schneider? Here. Bob Thomas? Here. David Mitchell? Here. Christy Kendrick is absent with notice. We have five. All right. If we could stand, please, and salute the flag, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So now we've got to get a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Have a second? Second. Okay, Mr. McClung, second. Any corrections, additions? Yes, ma'am. Um, do you want to add in as a short discussion the um, December, Saturday, Night Spring Street thing? I was going to probably address that under the mayor's comments. Well, that's what I'm saying. Would you like to do it as a discussion so we can give some input? Um, we can, if you want to add it. I think maybe we should. Okay, get okay. a second. Oh, for sake of discussion, I'll second it. Okay. Under new business. Okay. Anything Thank you. else? Much, yes, sir. Uh, under the commission committee authority reports, I, I think the last, it looks like the la almost the last two is parks and HDC. And when I, we first brought this up, I was hoping to get something from the building inspector, and I was wondering if he could at least send us, if not, not so much in his presence, but <coughs> fine, if he'd ID the, the, uh, status on the demo by neglect and then the number of citations under the clean city ordinance that were issued in 2017 and then it just uh, a note to us or something would be nice okay thank you anybody else if not, all those in favor of the uh, agenda is um, revised, amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> okay, get a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Any additions, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor of the minutes as submitted, approval of the minutes as submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, under our uh, updates and commission and committee reports, I don't think Justin here yet. Justin's yeah. here. Ah. I'm waiting on Bill. Bill's actually good. All right. Well, Virgil's here. So, Virgil, you want to do the HDC? We'll Absolutely. Do you first. Virgil Fowler, I'm chairman of the HDC. Oh. Uh, just a little update on the year. Uh, I'm just going to hit the highlights. We had a very productive year, I feel. We started out the year by uh, adjusting the uh, uh, motion format uh, a couple of different times based on some uh, camps that we had down in Little Rock, I believe it was. Um, we uh, spent some time in a couple of workshops uh, uh, detailing and uh, redoing the demolition guidelines, taking some of the vagaries and shells and whatnots out of it and making it more definite of a, a procedure on those guidelines. Uh, we uh, created a pretty thorough procedure regarding, regarding uh, code violations and, and complaint procedures. Um, we also spent many, many workshops uh, creating a uh, database for all the property files. Uh, it's a mapping system database. Uh, it'll map and uh, calculate uh, how many contributing and non-contributing structures you'll be able to go to properties uh, on the map. Now, this was uh, primarily created by a new commissioner, uh, Wendy Super, and uh, her husband. They did a very, very good and thorough job where we'll be able to put all the uh, property files, applications, and whatnot. Uh, in these when you click on the locations on the database. Uh, we also uh, just uh, defined definite uh, uh, voting procedures. We looked at uh, uh, several of the other commissions as well as city council. We uh, ended up reading, uh, send it, ended up being the most uh, concise and direct, uh, direct from the uh, planning commission's uh, voting procedures. 
and we're in the midst of and trying to move forward with meeting with the mayor and the building inspector on code enforcement procedures to see what we can do as far as suggestions on uh, enforcement processes. So uh, we've had a very, very productive year and gotten a lot of detail work done this year with a lot of workshops. Thank you. Brewster, what did you mean on the voting procedure? Voting pro uh, in the uh, HCC guidelines, uh, they were rather ambiguous in the way they were worded. They could be viewed in a couple of different ways, and so we had to uh, make it clear uh, what majority vote meant. Uh, and they were more clearly defined for city council and for planning. Uh, we did look at parks as well. And so we what ended did you up end up with? Uh, going with the uh, planning commissions where majority vote was based on the uh, uh, commissioners present. I've never heard of that before. We, we read a word for word off of the uh, planning. I, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. serious. I've never mm -hmm. heard of that before. So well, we had multiple workshops on that and uh, ended up reading word for word from planning. So there is there's, there's an ordinance that established <coughs> the HDC or something. And there's something that established the HDC? Yes, but it's not it, is it an independent uh, thing that they can it, do? It's not addressed in that ordinance. It's not addressed, so they can change the way they vote or anything. It's it's their it's their procedures, rules and procedures. And I think this is one of the topics that's on council on the agenda it for them. Yeah. Okay. So, are there any more questions? All right. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Virgil. All right, let's see, I think Mr. Featherstone's here now, somewhere. Ah, perfect timing. You're up, Bill. Here. Microphone, oh. right in front. I know, new, new wow. location. Uh, I never thought at 6.09 I'd be up. I apologize. Uh, so you want a progress report, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Every January, I do a State of the Parks address, and I, I do kind of a top ten list of things we want to get accomplished uh, for the coming year. And so uh, what better way to hold yourself accountable than to just kind of work our way through this and maybe I can self-assess our progress. Uh, obviously, you'll be the final judge. Um, number one. Continue progress on the master plan for Leatherwood, uh, specifically cabin remodels. Um, uh, have an active Leatherwood Park Committee for advisory input and install a new reservation system. And uh, we are three for three in that regard. Uh, specifically, we have stabilized and renovated the exterior of five cabins, including uh, new windows for all cabins. We've installed uh, new HVAC systems, heat pumps in five of the cabins that allow for year-round rental, something new for Leatherwood. We've uh, initiated an, an online reservation system called Reserve America, currently online and uh, working better every month. Um, we've completed the playground and ADA camping, uh, and we have uh, added and or, and or improved 16 campsites. We've, uh, we've uh, been given a generous donation from A&M Roofing for a new roof on the dock. We have begun the, a, uh, a natural and cultural resource inventory. Uh, specifically, Theo Witzel will be here next week. Is Justin here? Yeah. Next week to begin that. Uh, and that's going to be an assessment of the entire uh, Leatherwood Park uh, with regard to those resources. We're, that's something that's been, on the, uh, been in our plans for quite some time, and we're really, really happy that we've uh, been able to uh, get his services uh, online. And uh, we've added 45 new parking spaces at, uh, at the park. So, again, I think we've done well uh, on item number one. Item number two. Continue progress on the master plan for trails, uh, specifically connect the community center to Black Bass and Black Bass to Leatherwood, uh, build new trails at Black Bass, uh, start an adopted trail program, and uh, build a new trail uh, from Harmon Park to Clear Springs School. 
again, uh, trying to be as objective as possible. Um, if I had to grade us there, um, not so well. Uh, however, there is an ongoing negotiating uh, process going on with, uh, for, with a uh, uh, considerable grant source as well as uh, other funding partners uh, for both in-town trails and Leatherwood Park and there should be some news in that regard uh, in the very near future. Uh, number three, develop uh, a new operations and management policy manual. That process continues to be underway. Um, our uh, office manager, Doug Bowlerjack and Justin continue to work on that, trying to meld our existing policy manual with uh, some ideas and concepts and, and best practices that the state park system uses. And, uh, and it's kind of in a second draft right now. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Justin, but we, we hope to have that uh, uh, in some kind of close to finished form by the first of the year quite the project and uh, has, has, uh, we've been working on it uh, honestly much too long. <laughs> Overdue. Uh, item number four, launch a new parks website. Christian Super, our most recent, most current uh, member of the commission, I don't know if you guys have gotten to know Christian or not, uh, moved here from Oregon two years ago. Super guy, has tremendous uh, IT capabilities and he has uh, quite generously again uh, taken on this project for parks and is in the process of building us a brand new from scratch website. It's kind of in beta right now and we hope to launch that the first of the year. Yeah. And it's going to be vastly superior to our current website and I think, uh, I think everybody's going to be proud of it when, when you get a chance to take a look at it. Uh, item five. Develop a master plan for parks, incorporating revised versions of the master plan for trails in Leatherwood. Uh, that is incorporating our existing Leatherwood master plan, our existing uh, uh, trails master plan, and, and, and kind of uh, bringing those into uh, one plan, one plan for uh, the park system itself. And uh, again, if I had to grade us on that one, um, not so good, but in the works. Uh, six, establish a better surveillance of parks properties to help curtail vandalism. Uh, in that regard, we, uh, the installation of a, a brand new system at Basin Park will begin next week. Um, and uh, won't be fully functional at that point, but uh, certainly by the first of the year, we hope that it'd be fully functional. And it will include Wi-Fi for all um, uh, visitors and residents in the park itself. So that's kind of going to be a neat uh, aspect to that. Um, perform exterior makeover of the Harmon Park restrooms. If you're not familiar with the Harmon Park restrooms, it, it, uh, it has a failing facade. It's the only way to put it. And it's not worth fixing. Uh, as it turns out, it was not well designed. And uh, so we're going to do something completely different with the front of the um, restroom, which can I can I give them your idea? Which 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 may be which which may be a mural, um, and uh, cool. yeah, I think that's kind of a cool idea. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got murals. Uh, other places seem to be uh, embracing murals at a much higher uh, rate than they ever have, and I think that's a good opportunity to uh, add some art to the park. Uh, eight. Publish a regular newsletter to complement the website and Facebook, and, and as well as Facebook, and round out uh, a thorough public outreach. Uh, this will all be incorporated into the new website, and again, we hope to uh, be online with a newsletter. Uh, we, we, we currently are pretty active in Facebook. Chris has really made us more active in Facebook, uh, and just recently Instagram as well. Um, but we're going to embrace all the social media as part of the new website. And again, that should be online by the first of the year. Um, modify the resident requirement. This is number nine. Modify the resident requirement for commissioners for at least one commissioner. That's on us. 
but we would still like to have that achieved at your table. Um, everybody, everybody knows what I'm talking about there. Okay, that's something oh, you do not. Okay. No, I don't. Currently, to uh, serve on the Parks Commission, you have to live inside the city limits of Eureka Springs. Oh, okay. And so we would like to uh, uh, <laughs> modify that to where at least one commissioner can live outside the city limits. At, at large. Yeah, that has to happen at your table. Mm. I wish you did that. Some commissions do. I thought, already. We, already, I thought we already did that See, a couple I don't think you have. No. Oh, See, okay. I don't think so. Okay. I know it's been discussed at your table, okay. but I don't That's think you actually took I'm action on it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, number 10, constantly remind ourselves that the maintenance of existing land and facilities is at least as important as creating new facilities and opportunities to preserve and protect represents two-thirds of our mission statement, the last third being to enhance. And uh, that's just kind of a reminder as to what's at the heart of uh, what our true mission statement is at, at Parks, uh, something you have to constantly remind yourself of. Uh, you have to take care of stuff as well as try to create new stuff, and it's quite the balancing act when you've got a limited budget. <coughs> uh, some things that weren't, weren't on the to-do list that uh, we have accomplished, um, we've, uh, we've cleared out uh, all the undergrowth at Harmon Park and created some better sight lines. Um, if you're a frequent visitor of Harmon Park, I think you can appreciate that. Um, we've... Uh, Justin has uh, cleaned out the uh, the well at Basin Park and exposed the basin and illuminated the basin, so you can uh, actually see it now, day or night, and that's kind of a cool thing. Not kind of a cool thing. That's a very cool thing. <laughs> and how much debris was on top of the rock? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> Been a while since anybody took that on. Um, and we're expanding the uh, holiday lighting displays. Uh, we have spent the last of the money that you allotted us three years ago, um, and uh, we're able to just be more specific on exactly what we're doing in addition to what we did last year. But but it will be it will be a better display this year. Uh, but we are out of money as far as purchasing anything new for next year. No. Yes. CAPC gave you three more thousand dollars. It was left in the account from CAPC. Mike should have told you as of last week. You're aware of that? Yep. Okay. Thank we have you. some more money. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And so that concludes my presentation. Okay. But Justin and I are open to any and all questions you might have. Yes, ma'am. Is the crystal still in Basin Spring? Yes. Two of them, actually. Mr. McClough? Uh, yes, Bill. A couple things. Um, one, uh, you know, it's, it's been a while since we've, as a council, has looked at uh, uh, black bass. Uh, we, I know that there's efforts in trying to find a grant to, to do the repair there, but uh, every day is another day that adds to the deterioration. So if that's just, you know, I just mention that because it's a real concern to me. I just. It, uh, As it should be. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a scary thing that uh, you know that it sh should fail, and I don't know that it's necessarily going to fail, but but the facade keeps falling off and and and, and carried away, and and uh, it, it, you know it's just well one I mean, of these days I, we're going to have to really say okay we got to it's either get on or off, you know. It's, yeah, you know there's. I hesitate to say something like this because there's far too much hyperbole in the world today, but I don't think you can really overstate what you're trying to say, Terry, and, and that is, quite honestly, I don't think it should, should surprise any of us if that, if that dam fails at any point in time. As, you know, that could happen tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very real. Yeah. And as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, even though it's on property, all, all of it's city property, obviously, but it's on property that Parks uh, maintains on behalf of the city, it's not Parks' fiduciary responsibility oh, no. to fix the dam. No, no. I'm not, okay. not suggesting that. Okay. No, 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 no. Now, no, no, no. now uh, when, when you get out to Leatherwood, that's kind of a different story. And, and uh, even though the dam itself is safe right now, 
uh, obviously every every dam is destined to fail at some time and uh, needs expensive and, and uh, ongoing maintenance. And with the new Leatherwood tax, uh, beginning with next year's budget, uh, we're going to start establishing a rainy day fund to take care of things like, uh, you know, dredging the lake, fixing the dam, um, replacing our septic system, the kind of things that you don't want to do but have to be done. Sure, sure. Yeah. Secondly, um, uh, over at the bandshell, the, the stairs leading up to the bandshell, um, I mean, to the left, we're talking about the wood stairs. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The, the the stringers and the treads both are are getting pretty weather spooky. Beaten, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're getting some wood mill for that because those steps are, are so thick. Yeah, the, thick. the so we're yeah. We're doing some milling for the bathhouse and uh, uh, pavilion structure out there, so we're doing all that process of trying to get all that at the same time. Okay. It is. It okay. is on there. It's just. Kind of replacing it would make it very uneven in a high step. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, I, yeah. It, it's it's great to take it back with what it is. Uh, I just I don't know. Are the stringers in pretty good shape? I haven't I haven't looked at them as closely. Of course, you can see the butt ends of the. I I, I think as is often the case in some of the older buildings, if we start pulling those steps off and the stringers, I think we're going to be redoing the whole I thing. So. I, I, so I think it's if we can, it's, we just need, we're kind of planning on doing the whole thing at once, and again, we just have Time to, yeah. that's a winter project, sure. you know, coming up. Just winter? Yeah. So well, hopefully, hopefully by May Fine Arts or something yeah. like it, it'll all yeah. be done. We have, and there's there's some more work on the band show we'd like to do. There's definitely <laughs> some, some patching and painting we could do just to, to dress it up a little bit, the doors, mm -hmm. the light fixtures on both sides are kind of full. So there's that that's on our, our winter to do list. So that's a that's it's a good rainy day project. So ah, that's great. To cover, so. <laughs> Thank you. Yes ma'am. Um I, I don't we haven't really talked about Black Bass Lake since I've been on council. Who is is the city of Eureka Springs responsible for that or is it a city. Fin financially? What? Yeah. City. The city is. Okay. Right. So what if it what if it blows? What happens? The whole city floods or? <laughs> oh. <laughs> a lot a lot of things can happen if that happens. Um, but let me also while we're talking about uh, uh, I've been talking with uh, Northwest Arkansas Economic <coughs> Development District. As soon as we complete the project on uh, down here on the other side of of uh, Grand Central, uh, the street project and the tunnel down through there. <coughs> Uh, our next grant is going to go toward Black Bass Lake. Okay. Excellent. We're also looking toward, uh, we don't know whether or not it's going to work, but there's uh, <coughs> Bella Vista is in the opposite um, position we are in. They've received a grant to tear their, to keep their dam, and they want to tear their dam down in Bella Vista. <coughs> Um, which, which dam would that be? They have several lakes. It's one of the lakes that... Hmm. Are, they, are, they, are they giving up the lake? They're just going to... There's one of the lakes is they're going to give up and they want to make it back into a free-flowing free stream. Mm -hmm. If it works out, and again, we don't know, it's possible we may be able to redirect that grant to Black Bass Lake, Black Bass Dam. So we're working in that position to see And of that course that, work. you know, yeah, that, uh, that, that's an option we have as well. You know, you know, to uh, not have now, a, sure. a black bass lake. Yep. Uh, and of course, there are multiple options on how you fix the dam itself. Some are expensive and some are more expensive. Yeah. So that comes into play, too. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and oh, you know, just for your information, um, Peg, the, I think the cheapest uh, estimate that we had, <laughs> the estimate was 250000 mm. uh up to 550000 mm. Okay. And that still wasn't a uh, uh, restoration of the complete dam. To make yeah. it look like it, it did originally. Yeah. So that's that, that, that's even a bigger fabulous. number. That's yeah. even, yeah, they were, they were looking yeah. at, you know, a lot bigger yeah. number. This was just Million. to stabilize the dam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Just a structural fix. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yep. So. And uh, like while we're on Black Bass, uh, we're opening up a new trail. We're uh, grand opening this Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. One to three? Yep. Yep. Okay. Brand new trail, going to be right. a beautiful trail. Yeah. Where's it going to go? It's on the uh, east side of the lake. 
up, up high along the bluff line. Hmm. Go past the bridge on the right side. There's a connector right there. You turn yeah. to the right. It's really beautiful. Nice. Little it's there. really going to be the nicest trail at Black Bass. It's gorgeous up there, and it's a part. It's a part of the park that really you didn't have any access to mm -hmm. before. Okay. So Great. I think people are going to really like it. Yes, ma'am. How'd the hog situation end up at Leatherwood? It it comes and goes. Um, <laughs> We're making some progress. We had a few this week. Were we, were we finally allowed to go ahead and trap or whatever? Oh, yeah, we, we have traps. traps. Yeah. yeah. And traps then what do we do? Do I want to know? We dispose mm. of them. <laughs> They're big barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> they dispatch. Yeah, no, we're, we're just getting okay. back into the the, the <laughs> acorns are down and have been eaten, and it's getting back into a good trapping season right now with them. Okay. So we'll, we'll be kind of redoubling some efforts on that okay. coming up. S suffice to say that uh, our pigs don't become somebody else's problem. Okay. Right. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> now I think we should have a city dinner based on that, but you know. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sorry, I was late again. That's all right. Thank you. Can I interrupt real quick? Kim, does that light have to be on? That one, then it's blinding. That one over there, that. Need to be tilted yes. up. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. All I know is it's blinding. I sit here like this. No, it's the light itself. Okay. Yeah, because I'm having to sit like that. Oh, that's better. What about that? Okay. Better. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Next, uh, next item of business: uh, public comments. So, no, no public comments. All right. Uh, all right. Next item of business: unfinished business. Get a motion to discuss uh, Joe Gunnels and the Group Tour franchise. So moved. Second. All right. Um, Joe, you want to, you got anything you want to add from your last, I mean what we're doing I guess is looking um, at your application. Yeah, just a question. If you might want to come on up to the microphone please, sir. <laughs> uh, just a question, I sent an email today, Did if got council it. got it, I don't really need to make any more remarks than that email, did everyone? Get it or yeah, I read it. I didn't. Joe. Didn't get it. I didn't. And today was the first day they saw <coughs> the answers to those questions that were presented to you. Okay, for the that uh, Miss Kendrick mm -hmm. wanted to right, further. The mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, <coughs> if they just got it, if the board or the council just got it today, uh, I don't, it, it, it's really they've had time to read it, read it, and consider it. Um, no, I think the the quickest thing that I can say uh, to just you know ca you know just cover it real briefly is that um, what Smitty has asked for for him to for the transit department to take over the tram tours and not renew our franchise is based on, the economics of that is based on uh, that all of the group business that we book and all of the individual ticket sales that go through our, uh, through our own reservation system and through vouchers and things that, that, that the only way this works for the city to take it over and actually be profitable or sustainable would be if I just went out of business and didn't keep that business uh, any of that business, and that's not the case. So I think um, just for the council to consider that, and then again my email today just kind of uh, uh, summarize that, and then this is just further descriptions of um, more enhanced uh, description of what we do to promote group travel to Eureka Springs and have you know for all the past 22 years. So. I don't really have any more to say than that. If there's questions, I'm happy to answer them. Anybody from council? Mickey. Joe, did you ever break down the numbers between individuals and tours like I had suggested to both you and Smitty mm -hmm. in regards to let's look at 
ticket sales, not what kind of ticket. Did y'all ever have time to break that down? I didn't, um, and, and and what I would have would it would it would have been just on my part, of course. But uh, no, I didn't do that. Okay, yeah. I still think both of you need to do that. Each individual ticket, whether it's for one person in a group of 50 or one person, period. I really think you get a much better idea for numbers of sales rather than going by. 10 tours and 20 individuals, you know? Yeah, yeah. I really think you need to redo and start doing it like that. Mr. Mitchell. I have a question for Smitty. Sure. <clears throat> Smitty. Yeah. In looking at this ordinance group tour franchise, at the bottom it says page 83. Then it's under B, and it's number three for groups or ten or more. I'm having a hard time understanding that. It, it looks like something, it, it looks to me like if somebody ranges a tour with you, not through Joe Bell, that, that he's also getting a percentage of that or something. I'm having a hard time understanding that ordinance. Uh, it, it just, it's a blanket group tour franchise. Right now there's only one. Okay. Uh, if a group comes to us, the way the ordinance reads now, if a group comes to us, say they want a group of a tour two months from now, by ordinance, we refer them to Joe. Oh, so you couldn't, even if you get a direct referral to you directly, you can't keep that one. You, it, it has to go into this franchise and you split it. Oh, okay. Has I to got go into it. Franchise, yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. <clears throat> Thank you. And uh, talking numbers, uh, I was just looking at them today. Uh, we finished our tour, our individual tour, Saturday, and uh, fund-wise, we're down 1.2 percent from last year. Uh, ridership-wise, we're down 2 percent. Now, the difference there is difference between children and, and children, children and adults, which are different prices. And one last thing: mm -hmm. when we discussed this weeks ago, help me refresh my memory. You said you thought that the income was somewhere you would probably if you were doing all the tours the income would be somewhere it was less than 30,000 wasn't it and then you still would have to have you have to hire yeah. people it, it's, you it know, wasn't a lot of it's, money it's not economics for me it's groups I don't think groups are being served well with this group tour ordinance that's my concern okay um, if if you decide not to renew his franchise I wouldn't make any more money out of you now because I would have more expenses. Um, if you do renew the franchise, maybe I'd ask you to rewrite the ordinance where I can book my own groups that come to me. That was there are groups be that my come question. to town that don't want to go to the hassle of arranging with the franchise to contract with them. They just want to tour the town. Okay, so basically what you're saying is if we vote to have Joe continue and give him his, what you call it, um, then you would want us to rewrite the ordinance just so if someone comes to you, to the trolley depot personally, mm -hmm. you could accept it yourself. Right. But doesn't that mean that you would have to have an on-hand tour guide? I do. Somebody that already works for you, that have, wouldn't like be on standby. Looking around transit, I have four employees who have guide service experience. So um, they, they would be right there anyway. It wouldn't would be a be matter right. of calling and I'm saying, I need them, you Marty next week. Marty is one of them, office manager. <coughs> Linda Fraker, who is a dispatcher, was a franchise at one time before her husband passed away. And there's another gentleman who's done tours extensively. So, Well, and Joe, how do you feel about that? Thank you. <coughs> Make this a joint effort here. <coughs> well, you keeping your tour, but us adjusting the ordinance, so if he gets a request, he can deal. Uh, it's already covered in the ordinance the way it is. It happened, um, if it was Friday, I think, last Friday, uh, there was a group that had called um, the transit department on, I think it was Thursday, I don't know if you remember, but it was Thursday they called said they were coming to Eureka Springs, was interested in doing a tram tour. They talked to the transit department, not to me. And so Marty told them what time the tours were and what the price of the tour was. I don't know what price she quoted them, whether it was full retail price or if it was a group rate that they offered them, I don't know. 
Um, the next day, the group showed up and they went on the tour. They booked it and paid it at the transit department. So that policy is already there. It's not something that needs to be added. It's already there. But I think what Smitty is saying is that if someone calls him, mm -hmm. he would have the ability to do the tour himself through transit rather what? than refer to you. That's what he's asking for. So, and my question would be, why is that necessary? For Because we, we're already doing the tours. The franchise, uh, company does the tours our guides do those so well be a man I think what it would boil down to is the people would either contact the tour company which would be you right. or from being here before or from researching the town they would contact transit department right. thinking that they would be able to do it so it'd just be a matter of well you know who they happen to touch right. um, well, that would be up to the council to decide based on if that's, you know, if Smitty's asking that. My, you know, one thing, I, my paperwork that I submitted um, was it says, what have you done for the last three years to promote group travel to Eureka Springs? So what this would be to me would be, what has what was what has city transit department done for the last three years to promote group tour business to Eureka Springs? <coughs> what have they been doing so far? Smitty's concerned about groups, which groups are up a little bit. And as he said, uh, Smitty and I had a meeting um, at early October, and he said that the groups were down. I said, actually, I've checked. My groups are actually up, and he said, well, they're up a little, but they're up a little, um, and so. Um, I, you know, okay. Terry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I just uh, I have two things, and and one is, I'm assuming what uh, Smitty is, is is asking that if they, that if he does the whole deal, he gets the whole fee. I, I assume that's what it's about. It's about the money. If it's not, then what's the point? Thank you. Well, well he just said two or three minutes ago that it wasn't about the money at all. That it was about groups. Well, and I, my point, yeah, and that is, if, if if it's about groups and the concerns about groups, from the transit's point of view, what has transit done in the last three years? You've got what I've done and what I do. What if the concern? There's a real concern about groups. What has the transit department done to promote group tours uh, for the trams in Eureka Springs already? And so, and again, going back to the the groups that I have. Well, you know, they're still going to book with me. Now, he can, there are groups just like the one Friday that showed up and went directly to transit, and transit handles that. And they pay the transit, and our guide does the tour. So it's not an issue, apparently, with who does the tours. Uh, Smitty's own words at the last council meeting that we both were at said that Mr. Gunnels and his guides do a great job. So I would just feel a lot better about this if we had been, you know, basically being reprimanded for not doing a good job for all these years, that our guides weren't doing good, that there was trouble with me, there's some problem between us, that, you know, Joe Gunnell's Tours is not fulfilling our part of the franchise somehow. But just to say that, you know, it's more about groups, um, and groups are increasing a little bit, I, I don't understand. I have one other question, yeah. and that is, that is, what is the length of term for the renewal? I don't remember. The franchise right now, originally it was every five years, up until I want to say somewhere around eight years ago or something like that. And then it was switched. Well, it switched when it went from four franchises down to two franchises. And then um, it changed from five years to two years. So it's two and years I'm just now. asking if, if it is renewed, I would really like to go with five years. Um, you know, there's there's recourse that council has for if there's a problem in that five years. It's not like you're st <coughs> you're stuck with me for five years. There's ways to get rid of me easily if I'm in violation of something that needs to be. I think that's the reason, if I recall, why we did that was uh, reducing it to the one so that we could monitor it and. Yeah if there were difficulties. But I would at this time like to go ahead and make a motion that we approve the renewal for two years. I'll second. Get further discussion? 
Anyone? All right, all those in favor of renewing the application for two years, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. Well, all right. Could I ask one more question just about the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, just about, well, never mind. We'll just, I'll, I'll talk to you about it later. It's just about asking about changing it back to the final. <coughs> we'll address that. Thank you. Mayor? Yes, sir. Continuing of that. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we entertain for transit department for uh, looking at the issues of them booking their their own tours as requested by Smitty. Okay, can we get a second? Second. Second. That was looking okay. into a discussion. Or looking into it. Yeah. We yeah, because fair is fair. Right. At the same time, you know. Well, Joe brought up where the transit done to book tours. I can't book tours according to the ordinance. So I well, don't Well, that's what we're tours. talking about. The CAPC does the promotion for the city. And Karen Pryor has come in with groups who really don't want to have to go through rigmarole working for a franchise. I'd like who just want to go around the historic yes. loop. That's all they want to do. Okay. I'd like to entertain that we look at that. We'll do that. Thank okay. You. Do we need to vote on it? We can just do it as an agenda item or what? How you want to do it? Well, it's a motion and a second that requires a vote. Thank yeah. you. Okay. That's what yeah. I thought. All right. All in favor of the motion, say by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Right, so many. Now, Smitty, did you understand what that was for? <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, get a motion to uh, discuss the North Street update. So moved. Second. Go ahead. Um, I think the last meeting, um, uh, one of the council members wanted uh, more information on the lease. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, on through there. Uh, the only lease I had at that time was a handwritten lease, and I think since then, uh, the attorney, Don Allen, for uh, Dr. Beard, gave us, and, and I put in your packet, a copy of another lease <laughs> um, yeah. for your information. Mm -hmm. uh, this one was 1991. Prior to 94, is that not correct? I think 91, wasn't it? 91. Mm -hmm. It expired. It expired 94, 31st day of December. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was instituted 13th day of September 91. Right. Retroactive. Y yeah. Yeah. Because the payment started being paid January of 1990, which was kind of bizarre. Well. <laughs> right for the lease. So uh, I think Miss Kendricks was one that was wanting the copy of that. But anyway, yes, sir, Mr. Mitchell. Obviously, the lease that was supplied to us is ended back in '94. But there was a few concerns I had, even with this, or, or comments in general. I, I'm not too sure when the hospital or did the hospital commission ever have the right to enter into the leasing authority of city property so the, when could they have ever even had the authority to have instituted a lease that involved city property because if that would be the case if you even look now at the allegiance agreement it was it was just signed back when with a, a hospital commission person and there was no memorial signature on it uh, it's it's just kind of unusual and then you also take a look at this lease and the things that go on two hundred and seventy five dollars a month it ends in ninety four I don't know exactly when <coughs> Dr. Beard put in some work on the uh, HVAC system and or the roof but if you look at this lease which is the only one we have to look at it very clearly says that the leasee may cause the same to be remedied and restored in good condition and may charge the reasonable cost of the lease or. But it doesn't say anywhere in here that you can stop making payments up until, I guess, just recently. And then the other thing is, all this time that building's been sitting there, who had an insurance policy on it? Mm. We, it's been covered it's under the city's insurance it's policy. Well, that was good, yeah. at least. <laughs> That part was good, and uh, we didn't have to pay taxes. But it, if you just look at this old lease, it's 
I don't know. It's just very questionable. Well, it's an old lease. It's kind of irrelevant. It's in an, yeah. in a lot of respects. It's uh, a this lease. was just for the council. It's just a lease. Renew or review. I mean, information, not review information. Um, and I don't know if the commission, and I don't know whether uh, our city attorney can answer the question whether or not there was at one point the commission had the authority to enter into agreements or not. Uh, Mr. Weaver, do you know? At the point where this was done back in 1990, the way the statutes, I think, read then and still read today, the city council controls all city property. Unless city council passed some kind of document that allowed them to enter into this, it may very well have been an illegal lease even back then. But that would take research on the city's part to go back and see if in the 80s or 90s, they passed that authority over to yeah. the hospital commission temporarily or permanently even possibly. I don't think there's anything that would indicate it permanently because then it would be in our code book and there's nothing in the code book that I can find that would do that. In so it would have to be by resolution probably. And the research we've done we couldn't find anything. So t and it's an old lease so it really doesn't apply to anything right. now anyway. So. Okay. Any other? Yes, Mickey. So you have the update. Oh. Is this the update? But this is the. Are this you, is are you about to tell us something else? No, this is what you wanted to know, I and mean, this was asked. Right. What? Uh, so I've, I've given so we you. Got, we got and I did. Code, I did please. receive a letter from uh, Diane McClellan today, who was on the hospital commission. And basically the letter just said that she was on the commission and if she had any questions I could call her and talk to her. But she was resigned from the hospital commission <coughs> 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I hadn't, didn't have a chance to give her a call. So, Mickey. Okay, when all of this discussion started months ago, wasn't the one thing that was said that he had to repair something at that house and he was told not to pay rent anymore because he was paying for it, for the repair of whatever it was. I don't remember. That's now. what that's what we were led to believe was that he had to repair the roof and HVAC or the plumbing. It was something major. Um, but did we? Because ever the find city didn't reimburse him or wouldn't, then he wouldn't. So I'm, again, assuming this is was, all I'm assuming it was an attorney that told him not to pay rent anymore. I, I don't know. Okay, so whenever this was repaired, do we know when it was repaired? No. So we don't know how long. I don't have any records. I don't have any, any records on any of that. Okay, so we have no idea how long we haven't gotten anything. No. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell. Okay. Just an observation or a point. A lease ends in 1994. Two hundred and seventy-five dollars. At some point, some repairs are made. Some information is exchanged or whatever the person that's the leasee of this property quits making payments will be $275. So we'll assume it was somewhere in the 90s. So we probably have at least 20 years of staying in a building, not even paying any rent, which kind of makes you wonder about the leasee. But then you see this letter from this attorney in regard to this. <coughs> and she said, is it our understanding that there was a later written lease not referring to the one from 90 to 94, between Dr. Beard and the hospital commission, which had an increased rent amount. We don't even know if we were getting the increased rent. And again, here is a lease made with the hospital. She's saying with the hospital commission. So even if there was one around, it, the legality of it's questionable. And I just wanted to raise that point. Ms. Um, is there any point of even discussing that Norris Street address if we're not going to do anything with it. Because, um, you know, personally, I think Dr. Beard has performed a, a service to the community as being a, a community doctor here. And that this whole lease thing has just brought up this stuff that really kind of hurt his reputation. He's not retiring either, my understanding is. But are we even, that's why I was asking if, it, if this is an update. Are we being updated because we might want to use it for city council still? Or does this mean he's in there? 
I think it's all up to the city council. This was, I presented a lease to Dr. Beard uh, that the city council, I think, saw a copy of. Uh, and they uh, didn't like the amount of money right. that we were asking for. Right. And I think it's a matter of if the council wants, I mean, it's still a matter of negotiations in a sense. I mean, of uh, either, uh, and, you know, and I've, you know, what I was going to do is go back and look and see, I think, and Mr. McClung's in the real estate business, but I was looking at more like maybe at 75 cents a square foot on the top floor and, 20, and 50 cents on the, on the basement uh, and figuring out the square footage on that. But uh, from what I saw around town, it varies from 75 cents up to a dollar and a quarter a square foot. So... Uh, That's true. The, the, the basement, uh, probably even not quite that, probably more like 30 cents. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's basically unfinished and, and uh, so, I mean, you can, you can go in there and paint it and make office space out of it, but it's not, it's not uh, square footage that's going to be open to the public or anything like that. I, at least that would be my opinion of it as far as it'd be, you know, employee office space only. Um, uh, but I, but but it's but it's good office space. It would certainly be good for office and storage as well. Um, yeah, I, I was uh, with the mayor when we were up there, and and Dr. Beard told us these things about the heat and air and the roof, and mm -hmm. and that uh, he was advised by council to to uh, to not pay any rent, real or fiction I, I can't say uh, uh, it doesn't matter because it's I mean it's in the past and so you know personally uh, myself if, if if I can come to grips with the parking and how that would work that's still my number one choice for the city um, the um, uh, other than that if uh, you know, if, if, if that's not what we want to do, and, and that's where we've got to make a decision at some point, and soon. Uh, and if not, then if we want to renegotiate a lease with him or someone else, we can do it. Uh, it's got to be, be equitable to the city. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not for, for giving away our property anymore at all. Uh, he has made reference to the fact that he was uh, closing that office here or basically closing that office here and moving his practice to, to Hope. And, and I know that he has clients here, or patients here, that, that he's expressed that exact sentiment to mm -hmm. that he no longer sees. Uh, so, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a tough one. Uh, Charles' family has been here a long time, and, 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 and he has done good service to the city. Can't deny that one bit, but, you know, we have to move on with what we have to do. Mr. Mitchell. And let's remember the hospital still has clinic space inside in the old building where visiting doctors come in. Dr. Bell, the surgeon, the lady that's the dermatologist, and other physicians. So if you want to have a smaller practice and you have, you're moving your major practice somewhere, you still have the ability at this hospital to have clinic space to see patients on, on, on a, a much reduced schedule, very obviously. So just it's not necessarily that you're taking something away because there is the ability to... Um, and it's also, too, know. the hospital has told me that uh, if... Uh, Dr. Beard does move, they're very interested in renting that space well, for yeah, visiting just, doctors also. Well, yeah, and they just uh, brought in a new internist, I right. think. So. And as Mr. McClung said, Dr. Beard did tell both of us that he was in the, in the uh, procedure of moving his office to Hope and establishing an office down yeah. there. So that's all I know is what yeah. he was telling us. Well, did he tell us flat out no on that lease amount, or he just didn't like it? The amount. I don't remember exactly what he said. He well, wasn't here. His wife. Right. Do we need and to? And his and the attorney. 
uh, do we need to readdress this with him? And so I mean, I'd be glad to do answer. that. I'd be glad to to. And if, he, if it's it just that he doesn't like the price, then you can ask him, well, what ballpark are you looking at? And at least come back to us with, with a price. Well, I'm not totally in favor of, of I mean, it's our building. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, most landlords give you a lease and, and that's it. I mean, here's, here's the price that you got. Uh, I mean, there's some negotiation, certainly, but... Uh, yeah, no, I'm not talking I mean, a whole lot. If you'd ask me <laughs> if I'm moving into a building, what would I like to pay for rent? I like the $275 a month myself. I kind of like the free one better. <laughs> well, I'd go for the 275 but anyway, Years so. Of free. But, but that's, that's know, the update. I mean, that's what this was okay, all about. Well, why don't you go ahead and talk to him and at least find out what ballpark he's in. That'll give us a much better idea of which way to go. Is that a motion? I guess. Do I have a second? You might have motion to talk to Dr. Oops, Beard on price. Okay, Second. can I make a comment to you? Okay. Mr. McClung has <coughs> expressed yeah. his desire to still look at that as a possible move place for the council. If you go to negotiating with Dr. Beard at this point, if you do what you're talking about, you're probably yeah. cutting that avenue completely out of the picture. Even if we don't make a commitment to Dr. Beard? If you go to him and you say, what will you pay? You're getting very close to making a commitment. <laughs> so if, if we just say, what ballpark are you in as opposed to ours? Well, I would advise against it. Okay. I think but you're coming too close to making yeah. a deal. All right, then I'll withdraw my motion. Yes, sir. Oh, basically just the same thing. I, I think we don't, we haven't decided yet if, we, if the city wants to use it. There's no reason to discuss leases and rent prop, rental problems, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. We need to move on and make a decision where city council is going to be meeting first. And, and we have something. We have another item right after this, too, right. on that same issue. So, okay. Any further discussion? If not, uh, let's go to our second item, uh, discussion of the community center council room use. Uh, get a motion to discuss. So moved. Second. All right. Uh, Mr. Lasser, would you like to come up and make a little presentation on you and, and Diane both? I'm sorry. Don't mean to whoever would like to... I think you all have a copy of the Community Foundation uh, proposal. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we have been in discussion about this. Uh, since we're a community center, we want to do our part to help out the whole community. And we would love to have you guys up there in our community meeting room. Uh, of course, we're limited in funding. And so we would need to have some, I guess, some partnership and some yeah. give way with that. But I think uh, if you guys were there meeting, it would certainly benefit us. And I think it would benefit all of you. Now, I would love to give it away for free, but my board said we have to have something to pay utilities and maintenance. So we've, we've hashed this out, and this is about the best we can do because we have to maintain our business model and keep us afloat. So we've come up with two options. We've laid them both out there for you um, with the idea that um, hopefully this is beneficial to the whole community, hopefully it's beneficial to the city, and that um, it doesn't cost us anything to make it happen. So um, we are making a proposal for a five-year arrangement. Um, in order to do that, there would be some upfront expenses. We would be, as the foundation, making a commitment to allocate a portion of the funds that, that we have available um, to doing the actual remodel of the space on the inside. Um, the city would be making a commitment to do the exterior portion, which would include the ramp, the necessary parking, um, and then um, also providing the furnishings on the inside. If we could do that, that could get the space open and available. Um, then on years two through five, we have two options. 
um, there wouldn't be any more outlay of cash or any rent required that first year. We would all just go ahead and, and uh, expend those funds to get everything started. In years two through five, we've got two options. Um, the first one would be for the city to pay an annual rent of $5,000 that would cover the cost of the utilities and maintenance at 15 meetings a month. It comes down to something like $27 a meeting. Um, and then the option two would be if the, um, if it's easier to do an in-kind service rather than to allocate a budget line item, that's also an option that we're open to. So we have outgo of expenditures related to grounds maintenance, weed eating, and snow removal and all those things. We could certainly make an arrangement with the city to um, do in-kind and um, have public works, say, perform those services in exchange for the usage of the room. So. And let me interject to the council, too. I have talked to both our finance director and to um, the uh, state auditor to see if uh, option number two can be done. And uh, both felt that... Uh, there are methods that we can accomplish that if so desired. So. Yes, sir. Does this presuppose that the school district is going to give the building to you? Or this, this has nothing it, to yeah. do this is still with your lease agreement with the. Yes. Yeah, this is just. Right. Yeah. Well, right. the biggest complaint that, that the council had about that was that we're going into a contract with somebody that doesn't own the facility that we're renting, basically. And we are, well, we are still in control of the property. But so if we lose it, we lose, we lose our... Interest. Yeah, there, there's certainly validity to that. So we really looked at this from the perspective of um, we've paid our, um, our lease payment, or whatever you call it, it's, it's a lease to own right. arrangement. Yeah. So we've paid that payment for the next year. So we are in control of that property for... Um, and, until at least September 1st of next year. And so our, our goal was to come up with an arrangement that would make the council as well as our foundation feel secure enough that you have gotten value for a year from the investment that you've made. And I feel like the investment in making the handicap accessible ramp and the parking um, is not an excessive investment for a year's worth of lease. And Mr. Mitchell? No disrespect in any way to all the work of the community center. None whatsoever. But it's hard for me to take a look at what you just said in that proposal when you framed it in a year. And then I think of other options which are more permanent more stable, more uh, desirable for financial input because we'll have a long-term return in a building that we own, be it one of the other options. I, it, that, it just seems not as stable of an option to me as I would like to see. Well, please don't interpret my comments to mean that I in any way think that we won't be here after a year. We fully intend to be here. I'm just um, using your words. You, you are. And I was really responding to Mr. Thomas's comment about just value for service. And I wanted to take away, my goal was to take away a sense of vulnerability that you had made more of an outlay than you had received back. Uh, I just really wanted to put that. To allay your concerns, I mean, we have a 20-year lease, and with our fundraising and capital campaign, I, I think we could probably buy the lease out in a few years, if yeah. not sooner. I, this is this is a very successful project. I'm very enthused about it, so I don't think we're going to fail. Uh, but uh, I think the city being on board up there would really lend us a lot of credibility. And we, that's why I'd love to have you up there. But as far as we're not going to fail because the money's coming in, and we're just looking for the big donor to pay it off. <laughs> oh, aren't we all? <laughs> Mickey? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's some, there's some, there's some things that, There's some things mm -hmm. in the works. So, um, and I think it's really valid what Blake is saying. The city has very little financial ability to participate in creating this for the community. 
this is actually something the city can do to help create this for the community. Mickey. Um, I really think that everybody would probably feel a lot better if we could include the school board in the negotiations of a contract, you know, a lease contract in regards to if God help us all, y'all failed and had to quit, which I am not a proponent of that, but if you had to, that the school board will have been included in the contract in regards to even if they, the community center fails, we will continue to keep you on in this, this building. See what I'm saying? Yeah, but, I understand. I understand and I know saying, that I I'm, don't think that it can yeah. be done because they are the property owners. It can be done. I don't know that they're exactly thrilled with the idea. Well, we have a 20-year lease with the option to buy, mm -hmm. which we we anticipate doing that. I think you will too. You uh, need to get closer to the microphone. I think Murdo's so, having a hard time. <sighs> You know, with the lease, with that would mean a renegotiation of that whole lease. It shouldn't. It should be a matter of on this one building only that they agree to let us continue on there either with under the same conditions or whatever. It would just be it would be like an added paragraph. Yeah. Because uh, we would have to have a contract. And it would just be one little paragraph that they would be included in. You, you would have a contract with us, mm -hmm. and um, I don't see the school board being willing to participate in that Well, that, that's what I'm saying. They, legally, they could do it. In reality, from what I've been gathering from them, yeah. they're not interested. Not but... Hmm. Mr. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, I, I'm not really concerned about the school board. Um, um, refresh my memory on expense. Um, oh, okay. Come I on. That, I thought that was yours. Sorry. No, oh, I'm here. <laughs> okay, good. Um, you know what? What were we talking about to to do the the ramps? You're you're still planning on doing the interior stuff that we originally talked about and all that. You know, it's 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 a it's a tough one. Uh, but no Gosh. matter where we went, we'd have to do the furniture. Well, what about uh, we're and we're not going to do, set up the video. Well, that's up to. Or, or we may do the we we may just video, but but not. We may we may not do the live video. Right. Video taken. Right. Correct. Um, so we're going to have the furniture expense no matter where we go. Um, the site work and prep is probably less than five thousand dollars. Concrete. I mean, all we're doing is the sidewalks and grading. So not doing and not doing a live video. We don't have to worry about the cable company and doing no, all we that. Don't have so we to worry just about the set up the equipment and where we go. Correct. Similar to what we're doing here. Well. You know, I'm, it's we're approaching the end of the year, and, and and our thoughts were to try and get something accomplished by then. And, and you know, it's 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 kind of one of those blind faith blind faith things that uh, you know sometimes you got to step out there and and uh, I think I mean, in just my own personal opinion, I think we've we've. Uh, would have a lot to gain by moving up there. I think this would be a good, good moving position, a good spot to have council meetings, mm -hmm. and it would also, you know, put a uh, a tenant into a building, add a magnet, you might say, to the space that would attract mm -hmm. other people up there possibly. Um, for the money, about money that's that uh, we're looking at, uh, it's. It's, it's certainly negative. fair. I, yeah, that, yeah. And that they're treating us equitably. That's you for know, sure. And uh, and even if something happened after two or three years, well, we'll just come back to the auditorium or we'll look at something else at that yeah. point. Yeah. No, we're not even going to be any worse for sure. Uh, it's something that uh, I think would help the community and, and would see show a lot of uh, the community support in through there. I mean, my personal feelings is. Uh, that's the best option out of all of them uh, that I like. Um, do I address you? 
or what's your question? <laughs> well, the, the question is, is that a de dedicated meeting space for the city of Eureka Springs Council and Commissions? We will yeah. we will it, dedicate all the meetings you need. We'll, we'll allocate the 15 but meetings a month, and if you need to schedule special meetings, we'll make space for that. But it is no, it is also going to be available for the community. It's a community. It meeting would space. be, excuse me, it'd be similar to what we've got at the council in the jury room. You know, that's not really dedicated space. Right. It's used. We use it as needed and when needed. But if uh, other the jury needs it, then they use it. Or if another group needs it, they can use it. Uh, so elections and it'd be a lot similar to what we're using at the courthouse. Is the way I look at it. Okay. Um, what about our equipment? Moving that around, will that have to be moved into another room after we, after the meetings, after all commission meetings? We can meetings? secure it. It's no no different. I there, mean, we'll there, there's there's closets that can be locked yeah. in there, and, yeah. and we've we've addressed that in the yeah. proposal. And in fact, I think you could probably build a case to handle the the transformer and stuff. And if it's just the camera and tripod, that's easily moved and stored. Like all this stuff. You know? Yeah, all this stuff. Like it, like it does at the normal council meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. So for furnishing, then basically the furnishing in there would have to be stackable chairs and tables at the front and all, because if it's a community meeting room, it has to be able to be reconfigured consistently depending. So. Correct. Yeah, that's a good point there that David made. It, and that if if we're to provide that, I mean that's fine, but it would be things like this and chairs like that. Yeah. Unless we well, charge rent. Simple enough. Well, yeah, you have to reconfigure. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't think Correct. we're going to. We don't get to take the chairs out of the out of the jury room. <laughs> we no. can try, but I don't think that would go very far. But you know, that also requires a lot of storage space to move all these chairs and tables There's and stuff There's a large storage them, space But then that's there. their problem, not ours, per se. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, the sharing of the room would mean we could have everything mm -hmm. set up and it would just stay like that. If there was someone who needed the room, then what they are you. We're going to put you first on the calendar mm -hmm. each month with your scheduled meetings. We're going to book the room out as needed for other people that want to use it, and we'll make sure it's set up for your meetings. The okay, so, so what, what I'm center saying center is center. Center. if someone then wants to use the room in between our meetings, mm -hmm. then you would do any rearranging, but if they don't, we could just leave everything as is. Yeah, it, it, the, the furniture will just be there. Did okay. I just hear you say you're going to set the room up? We'll Did just I make just sure that the, that the furniture is back where it needed to be. So you're setting the room up based on the meetings, the way they're supposed to be configured. Hmm. Okay. Right. Hmm. Mr. Mayor, yes, I'm I, have, I have a question for them okay. and then a comment. This is, I'm just really interested. I want when, to the, see. when you formulated the plans for the community center, the cafeteria wing mm -hmm. was supposed to become business rental business space why has no one rented that space that that's actually still the plan there are renovations that need to happen on that building to make it rentable so we have not pursued it until we can get to those some of those basic renovations first and why why haven't you I mean it's been two years now why haven't you it's all a matter of fundraising we're prioritizing what we're doing so our first priorities are to um, get activity at the site, get people in the gym and make that happen. So um, as you know from all the many articles, we really got stumped um, earlier in the year when we started renovations and we encountered some serious mold issues in the gym part of the building and the lobby. So we, we had to kind of get stopped there. We had to raise additional funds, which we're currently in the process of doing. Um, and uh, Friday we should be reviewing bids that will allow us to um, accept a, um, uh, a contractor to do the mold remediation and then move forward with the, with the remodel that has been planned in that lobby and those lobby restrooms and um, move us towards getting the gym open. So that's been our priority. That's where we're allocating funds. We would be actually redirecting some funds to prioritize the community meeting room to get you guys there soon. Okay. Well, my comment is just to get off the subject of money, you know, this city really prides itself on its history. The meeting room over in City Hall became not good about 10 years ago, but they met there for 100 years. I think the 
I just think that going into something, you know, that's a one-year lease or, or five years, you know, and, and you don't own it and other people are meeting there, that just doesn't fit with what the city of Eureka Springs wants to be to me. I think it fits that the city of Eureka Springs as a community made it clear years ago. Mickey was at all of those charrettes that we held at the public meetings and it was so evident for all of you that were there, which was certainly there as well, um, that that was the overwhelming opinion. Didn't you yeah. walk away from those meetings and end up thinking, wow, we actually have our population united, that this is what yeah. everybody wants. Everything that people brought yeah. up at that meeting could be done yeah. at that center. So, so it's been our mission to work on fulfilling that vision that was established at those community meetings five years ago. And we've been working ever since then to try to find the path to it. And um, we're still working on it, and we hope you'll be part of it. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, uh, you know, it's, it's coming to crunch time, I think. So, uh, um, so either get on or off, but let's, let's just, I make a motion to, uh, uh, that we choose the community center for our office meetings uh, as soon as we can have them ready in, in 2018. Um, I'll second that. Um, based on, on the premise of this at right here, you know, the details to be worked out, but that's, that's, that's the basis. I will definitely second that. And so far it's been the most convenient for the community if we can't stay where we have been with all the parking and it doesn't appear that anybody wants to redo the fire station which is my actual first choice <laughs> community center fits everything we need that the community needs that the people need I'm not thrilled to death with the idea of sharing my room but that can also be worked on but um, yeah, it's got it's got the space. It's got everything the people need. It's got the parking. It's convenient. It's got trolleys if we need them. Mr. Mitchell. Well, it does have the parking, and it does support the concept of a community in the center. And I agree with Mickey's comment. I'm not pleased with the community meeting room concept of it at all. That part still is concerning to me. It also the the part of not having the stability of the building and setting up that we own it, that it's ours, that we're fixing it for long term, not the potential it could all collapse within a year or two. And then we're right back where we were looking for a place to go because nobody wants to sit over there. So the, that, that is of concern. But at the same time, I do understand supporting the community center. I've got that. I just am having a very difficult time here weighing <coughs> supporting the community center with putting the city in a position of a possible short-term fix. Just, it's a real difficult. Ms. Adamson, you had your hand up. Um, I did. It, I know this is just the, the presentation of a like woo -hoo, happy happy days. A lease is being made, but uh, and during um, uh, making a lease, there's always like an escape clause for you and for the city in case things go bad. Is will that be part of a a, a, a fail lease? Yeah, we obviously have a lease drafted and, and present that to you. Right now we're just making... But I mean, is there like an escape call? Like if we have to get out of the lease, say this, you know, we got all this money to renovate the, the auditorium to move here. What, do, what would we be owing? What would we be owing the community center then? If hey, we I think out? I think we can negotiate that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just ask. I don't think that now we're just talking about the concept, right. and, and we can work work the lease okay. leases out. Yep. Uh, Mickey, um, I don't mean to be short with you, but we you were short out. with me, I'm and I'm short. <laughs> no comment. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we could probably work something out eventually down the road 
in regards to sharing our room whether it means eventually we buy it from that one little space from you or how much do we pay a year rent over that we weren't supposed to be paying don't I don't pay know. For the jury room. we don't pay for the jury room. no we pay for our city offices yeah um, I'd have to get back to you on that okay whatever that would be we might be able to buy our room and move the courthouse in there but um anyway i'm sure something could be negotiable or at least keep that in mind when you work on a lease that down the road our, our commitment is to a community center space and a community use right we may want to buy that room so to speak to be permanently in the community room uh, Bob, <laughs> uh, i'd like to offer an amendment to the motion that's on the floor and that would be that we make a decision to move to the community center if the space is dedicated to the city. Could you Our, define dedicated? If, if you are the, the sole only, user? The only yeah. user for that. The, this offer is only predicated on it being a community space. We, we are developing a community center. Right. Okay. Well, I have, I'm, I'm making the motion that we do it only if we have a dedicated space. All right. I think that's what they've been saying they can't do. Well, this is a way, I mean, it helps us get that community meeting room, but it's also... Uh, wait, wait, wait. I don't even know if there's a second for that amendment yet. I would second it. <coughs> okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. When you know it can, can't be done, why even do it? So the reason we don't want the dedicated space, we're trying to build a community center with a community meeting room so other groups can use it. We're setting aside any meetings you require. We will make sure that, me that space is open for you. But th this is the city's opportunity to create a community meeting room for our town. David? I need to ask the city clerk to read that motion again from Terry, if you don't mind, what that motion was or somebody tell me. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. To choose the community center uh, for the meetings as, as soon as proposed. possible in 2018, according to the proposal they submitted. Okay. Now, a question to the uh, the attorney: Should we be even discussing? Uh, that's a motion to do that, but should we even be doing that before we've seen the lease? That seems a little premature. It seems to me like we should have the lease in front of us as part of the discussion before we would just say. Yes or no to that? The Norris lease? No, ma'am. The, uh, the the lease that they're working on that we apply to to to, th to that. I think it would be best if uh, Mr. McClung would uh, alter his motion slightly to say to authorize uh, the mayor or whoever the council wishes to pursue toward a lease. The lease ultimately would have to come back to this table and be yeah. voted before you would pay it. That was just a question. But, but at this point, no. his wording is maybe a little bit firmer than what I would, would suggest. <laughs> okay. But, but, uh, but authorizing someone to start the process yeah. so that you have someone who's actually putting words on paper for a lease to bring to you, yes. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I understand what uh, Mr. Weaver is saying. However, uh, I think I think the motion is is to make the commitment to them, so a lease can be drawn, and then that lease can be reviewed by the city attorney, by your office, by us, whoever. And and if it's not the way we think it should be, according to what we agree upon, then you know if we don't sign it, we don't sign it. You know, so I, I think, but I but I think we need to have a level of commitment. And that's why I don't want to do. And didn't you say the lease is pretty much no this anyway. To. Okay, hold on, yeah. just a moment. I'm just saying that that's why I don't want to make that amendment. No offense to uh, Mr. Weaver. I I just I think I think it's better that you know that that okay we say yes or we say no right tonight and we move forward. Procedural question. What? Uh, Bob made. An amendment. Peg seconded. Is that not the motion that's on the that's floor? That's correct. Now? I'm sorry. That's what we're talking yeah. about. Oh no. <laughs> we're talking about the amendment that Peg and Bob seconded. So, whether or not that the room would be, and Terry was adding and saying he thinks the lease should go on like it is. If I'm not mistaken, he was arguing. Well, that's, against, that's in reference to Mr. Mr. Weaver's statement is what okay. I was 
was yes, referring but to. But I was that. also yes. saying it you were as opposed to in favor of the original motion and not in favor of the amendment that Bob's proposing. No, I, I, I didn't say anything about Bob's okay. amendment. Okay. Right. I didn't say anything okay. about that. Right. Just only to Mr. Weaver's comment. Okay. So we are talking about the amendment, though. That's what the motion is, the amendment on there. So we got any more discussion on that? You have a question, Madam Clerk? When Tim made his comment, he was referencing Mr. McClung's motion, not Bob's motion, correct? I was trying to answer the, the question placed toward me, which I think applies to both the amendment and the original motion because voting the uh, amendment to the motion in effect is if it is approved approving potentially the, the leasing of the property now given what Mr. McClung said I think his interpretation of his motion and therefore the motion that is being amended potentially by Bob is less strict than the way I interpreted his words because he's still talking about approval later on. Oh, yeah. What is your understanding of the, of the motion that is currently on the floor? The current motion is their amendment. But to approve their amendment would require that to be a term of the lease. which then falls back to the original motion. All right. Is it possible that you could All right. state I'm so what lost. the motion that's on the floor is? Uh, it is Bob's motion, as I understand it. That we not pursue moving to the community center unless we have a dedicated space. Yes. Okay, so that's the motion that's on the floor, correct? I think so, yes. I'd okay. That's an amendment to the original. That's not, correct. That's not an amendment. <coughs> that's a totally different motion, isn't it? No, that's, that's, he's amendment. wanting to amend my motion to include that as a caveat. <coughs> so to keep all the ducks in a row, would it not be appropriate to vote this, vote on this motion? and then make the changes? What? No, because his motion to amend the motion would be a superseding motion over the original motion. Yeah. Correct. So he, his, his gets voted first. Bob's does. Yes. And can we with just withdraw back step by step and then get back to Mr. McClung to start over? Mm -hmm. Well, because I should Mr. Mr. So since we have a motion and a second to amend the motion and it has to do that, are we in discussion now on the amendment? Yes, yes. correct. Okay, <laughs> then I have a question. Okay. <laughs> there was another option that the community center said about moving over to the other wing over there close to the cafeteria and that would be dedicated. What yeah. happened to that? Um, that can absolutely be on the table. Um, that of course, that's going to cost more money to the city. We were trying to come up with the most affordable option to the city and be able to get you in there kind of quick and easy. So the entire um, business model of the community center is based on the revenue generated from those office spaces. We don't have the option to be flexible about that. So those spaces will rent for a dollar a square foot and require um, more renovation than what's required at the community meeting room. Um, those offices are, or those classroom spaces are about 900 square feet a piece, so you would be at $900 a month to rent one of those. And um, the renovations would need to um, be addressed. Um, and there wouldn't be the, the easy access to an, an ADA equipped restroom okay. there like there is at this one. Okay, that, so that was what I needed. Okay. This Any further discussion. discussion on the amendment? Okay, uh, I have a roll, roll call on the amendment, please, ma'am. 
You want to? Can you read the? Uh, to not pursue it if the space is not is dedicated. not dedicated to the city. So Does everybody that, understand? It's a double negative, yes. Yeah. What? To pursue it if it is dedicated, but we're going to stick with the double negative to not pursue it if it isn't dedicated. Okay. All right. So if you vote yes on that, that means you approve of that. You're voting to not pursue it unless it's dedicated. Okay. Yeah, wow. Is that legal? <laughs> you have if we vote, you vote, you vote, vote yes for or, or against it. Vote yes <laughs> if you want to proceed with the, with the lease being dedicated. Only dedicated. Okay. Exclusive use. Exclusive right. use. Okay. Okay. Does everybody understand? Mm hmm All right. Roll call. Are you in agreement that that's what the motion is? Yes. Okay. Ms. Adamson? Yes. Mr. McClung? No. Ms. Schneider? No. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? With much regret, yes. Three, two. Fails for lack of quorum. Quorum? Unless you vote. Um, That's a right. four. If, if. Have to have four to pass. There's only three. Oh, I'm sorry. You said it failed. 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 Uh, you can make another motion. I thought I said failed. Make another motion. Did I not no, say failed? I think dedication at this point is done. I want to get out of here. The motion and did fail some for something. an absence Good. of four votes. I thought you said quorum. That's my mistake. Okay. I did say quorum. Quorum four. Correct. Majority. Quorum. Majority. Yeah. Okay. Which brings us back to the original motion. Yes. <coughs> Any further discussion on it? All right, let's have a roll call on it also. Which is to accept, to move forward with the proposal as soon as possible in 2018. Mr. Mitchell. Abstain. Oh. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Ms. Schneider. Yes. Mr. McClung. Yes. Ms. Adamson. No. So we have three yeses, one yes. no, and an abstention. I'll vote yes. So now we have four yeses, two no's, and an abstention. All right. <coughs> Get that started. Thank okay. You. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Your count is four two four one four, one, one. one one. We have nobody abstention being counted as a no for purposes. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. You're correct. Otherwise, we get an extra vote in there. <laughs> okay. All right. The <clears throat> next order of business uh, it's regarding the same situation, and it may come as. Uh, oh. And um, you know, uh, I don't know whether it's going to help or cloud the issue or not. Um, the question came up because of the school board um, being willing not to give the building or the old school to a uh, community foundation, but they might be willing to give it to the city. Our indication is that they would be possibly. Um, the school board attorney. Oh, can I have a motion to discuss? So first? moved. Can you get a second. 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 Okay. <laughs> um, the school board attorney, according to the superintendent, felt like they could not legally do this, uh, and so I ask uh, to get an attorney general's opinion on whether or not this was feasible. The Attorney General gave us a preliminary um, indication that this was feasible and it was permissible according to previous uh, opinions and previous uh, school districts uh, activity in giving this project to other communities. Uh, in your packet there is a copy of uh, that attorney's opinion that was dated actually 2016 that uh, 
Uvalde Lindsay, Senator Uvalde Lindsay from Fayetteville was asking uh, regarding Greenland and Winslow School District. Uh, the attorney that we talked to at the Attorney General's office said that uh, the Attorney General Rutledge is drafting an opinion that will uh, address Eureka Springs issue specifically but so far as they're concerned well from all appearances at this point is that there's nothing to prevent the school from giving it to the city. Mr. McClellan. Uh, there is one and that is a vote by the school boards and in the, in, in the only way to I think to correctly proceed with this if it's something that we want to do is to get on the school board agenda and ask them to give it to us. You know, otherwise everything else is a waste wow. of time. Personal opinion. Okay. Mr. Mitchell. And another question you would want to raise before we did that. That's an excellent point. Absolutely excellent. But another question is would the city really want to put itself in a position of being obligated for that piece of property when we have other pieces of property in town that we're sitting in that are quite an expense to the city uh, and that, that we have to maintain and hang on to and then potentially put ourselves out there with, an, and I'll just say it, another albatross around our neck. It's just, it's a little... I don't know if I would want to obligate the city to, and it sounds great, if we had money, things were looking good, and and we just felt really comfortable and all, but to take on an <coughs> obligation of that piece of property and all that it entails and, and, and have it stuck on the city, that, that's a dangerous road. We have, um, when I, before I became mayor, uh, we were trying to figure out what to do with the school. Uh, and I said at that point in time that the city could not afford okay. that property if it was given to them. And we couldn't. Uh, I think that's what ultimately resulted in the foundation being established uh, and coming up with a business plan to show how uh, that piece of property can be self-supporting and self-sustaining and it's probably a pretty good business plan. Do y'all want to come up and help me out on this one, Blake and, <laughs> and Diane? Because part of what this thing is is that the purchase price of the school, uh, of what the foundation has to pay the school, uh, 400000 Five hundred. Yeah, the, the, what we have right now is a, a lease purchase arrangement of twenty thousand dollars a year for twenty years. So four hundred thousand dollars. If the foundation is not obligated for that four hundred thousand uh, dollars, they can take that four hundred thousand dollars and put it into the project. Correct. Uh, plus, speeding up a lot of the other. Uh, revenue with their uh, business model that they developed, which is, I have to admit, can can be successful. I mean, can be good. I think it's a valid business model. So what you're saying, uh, Mr. Mitchell, is true, but I think also um, they have taken on my suggestion of coming up with a with a, a model, a financial model of making it making it work. There's still some in. There's still some, if, let's just go if, the school district did give this to the city, if they would still, we still have a, a problem of there's a, a lease, not a lease, but a, a memorandum of understanding between the school district and the foundation. There, yeah, there's a lease purchase. A lease purchase that would be contingent upon all this. So we would then have to re go in and renegotiate some sort of a, lease purchase agreement revision memorandum of understanding with the foundation uh, as being project uh, managers of the property. I don't know how this would all work out, but I, I know it could be done. Uh, so we wouldn't be the, uh, uh, what do I want to say, landlords uh, as such. We wouldn't be responsible for all the maintenance and taking care of it and everything. That would be back into the foundation. Uh, 
But there's there's a lot of issues that would need to be worked out, but I don't see it as unsolvable as yeah. this. And I don't know what well, y'all thought. Big benefits for us since we don't own it, or neither does the city. We're cut off probably 80 percent of the grant opportunities. Mm -hmm. And if the city were to own this and we had the lease, that immediately opens up all these avenues to us that have just become big obstacles. Yeah. So, Mickey. Um, something I have toyed with for five years now. I can't believe it's been that long. If the school board gave the property to the city, doesn't the city, aren't they exempt from paying property tax? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if the school board gives the property to the city, we claim whatever building room, whatever it is that we want and or need for city hall, so to speak. Then we work out a buying lease with the community center and they can buy the rest of the property minus that one building. We would have our building, they would still have their community center with us and Scott's in the middle of it and it would be a win-win all the way around with a much lower yeah. price. We have this business model to fund this. Mm -hmm. It's a private public partnership. If we start cutting away buildings, that collapses. Oh, now but see, if we've taken to... one building, probably on the opposite side from well, where we're talking, if we our... take one building well, away uh, and then lower your buying price by well, a that... lot, that would it make a difference. Match our Mr. Mayor, I want to call a question. Okay, okay. okay. we got, we got, I don't know. Anyway, it's a suggestion. We're all in discussion. Uh, yeah, it's I a mean, suggestion. It's, I mean, it's, it, it's a it's a moot point unless we have the building, and you know it's, it's all speculation and conjecture. It doesn't mean anything unless it's, we go to the school board to try and get food for the property. Thought. It's is there a motion on the table? Think about it all you want to. No. I'm tired of it. Motion needs a second, and that is the motion. What is well, calling the question for what? There's, is there a motion on the table? No. For what? No. No. It was just a call discussion. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and he doesn't have a second, so I have a. a all right. I thought we were just Why discussing. didn't we discuss? The, the potential of what McClung said at, about potentially having the property given to us before we had the discussion about entering <laughs> an arrangement to take the building. I mean, it, it seems like it, the order, it would have been better to have had discussion about the lease and all that we were, uh, the city taking this and then letting them lease it versus it, it just seems out of order to me. Well, if I think what we're needing uh, is if we have a motion to take it to the school board for, this, for their... Uh, I'm not their making that motion. You can make it up, sir. You can <laughs> yeah. somebody well, make it somebody, up. Somebody, somebody wants to make it. Are giving it to us? Yes. Okay, I'll make that motion. What is the motion? That the mayor talked to the school board about donating the property to the city. You have to get on the, their agenda and and make a formal request. Is there a second? Is I'll, there a second? I'll second that. All right. Now then, discussion on that. Yeah. I'll have so yes, sir. you're saying to make a formal request to give it to the city? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we need to look into that a little bit further before we actually ask for it. They may hand it over to us before we... <laughs> <laughs> no, we need to know if they're even willing to or not. Well, that's the difference between asking them to do it and asking them if they're willing to do it. I think they've already said they're willing to do it. No, they no, have not. No, they have not. Oh, okay. this, is no. Only, this is only one or two members of the school. Oh, story. okay. So this is not, this is something, as uh, Mr. McClung said, still needs school board's approval, if they're even willing, you know. So is making some assumptions that they might be. So then is the motion to ask them to give it to us or to discuss it with them? To see if they're amendable to giving it to us. Look, let's not beat around the bush. Let's ask them for it if we want it <laughs> or forget it. You know, it's one and of the other. Then we can give you the property to maintain. So, <laughs> so you're sticking, is it your amended motion that you're sticking with? Yeah. 
I don't David, are you whatever the group thinks I don't care as long as we find out one way or the other please Thank just you. make your motion clear that's that is what I'm Amendable looking for. or flat out I'm looking one at the, the I'm, I'm looking at the mayor either wants to which, right. if, Let's see if, if, they're if they give it to us, we can always say we don't want it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Now I don't know what I seconded. So you seconded amend, her amended was to go see if it's. Could you read that to, back to me? I, I want to be sure I understand what, what I what seconded. I meant in the first place, anyway, amendable to give it to For us. For the mayor to go to the school board and see if they're amenable, amenable to the concept of giving it to the city. Okay. And then I will keep my second on that. Yes, okay. absolutely. Because that's what I meant. Okay. Anyway. Any further discussion? Uh, there being none, uh, all those in favor, sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. 4-1. Four Four one. One. Yes. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'm, and I hate to make things worse for you guys, but I move to reconsider the vote on the negotiation for the lease because I actually voted in the wrong way. On Mr. McClung's motion. Then you need to and I, I, quite frankly, <laughs> I voted for it because I thought I thought it included my amendment to have dedicated space. And when I realized that it did not, that that had, amendment had failed, I voted inappropriately. So the the vote that ended up being four zero one correct is the second roll call vote. We need to have a new vote. How does this work? Typically, the rules require this to be at the next next meeting. Exactly right. Rob's yeah. rules. Yeah. No, it can be done immediately in the same meeting. It would be take an extraordinary vote of the council to do that. I think. Well, I'll wait till the next meeting then. <laughs> and the vote comes from the majority of the vote? The prevailing vote. The prevailing vote. Yes, the prevailing. Okay. And in this case, that's the eyes. Mm -hmm. All right, so <clears throat> we so will have... Could. Well, I mean, if it can be done, to, I, th I think Robert's rule says it can be done in the same meeting, but I will, you know, if it can't be done, it can't be done. I think it can, but it takes an extraordinary vote. What's the two-thirds? Two majority of the vote? To reconsider? Yeah, it take a two-thirds. And then at the next meeting, what would it take? At the next meeting, I think it only takes a majority to get it on the okay. roll, then it'll right. take a vote. I'll wait. All right. All right. Are we done? Uh, yes, sir. Ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right, that brings us to uh, item number five, the council feedback on planning recommended code changes. Motion to discuss. Second. Melissa, were you wanting to? Who was doing this? One? Oh. <coughs> or were you one? I mean, somebody. I think you wanted this on the agenda. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh. You want to direct direct uh, what what uh, you want to hear? My nose won't quit What we're doing? Uh, we handed you the final rendition. What two meetings ago? And. I haven't had any feedback. I hope everybody's. No, we're talking about the recommendation. Oh, okay. Oh, the, go ahead. the codes, go, the code sorry, changes, ahead. the yeah, definition right. changes, the deletions. I haven't heard from anybody with any changes. I think what the commission did is good. Um, I would like Tim to look it over and see if there's any verbiage that needs to be changed. But I think it's good, and I think you should consider passing it. Mr. Mitchell. Yes, I, I, I have looked it all over with all the strikeouts and everything here. And to, to expedite this and move it on, I'd like to make a motion that council take the recommendations from the planning commission 
uh, regarding the packet that we have uh, and refer this to the city attorney for final review before we vote on it for permanent inclusion. <laughs> so your motion is to send it on to Tim for his review? Yeah, that's a great way to put it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> okay. I, I, I appreciate sorry, that. I didn't know. <laughs> it wasn't. I totally appreciate what the clean ended up. Yeah. <laughs> Any further discussion? Mickey? Is there any way we can get an actual printout of the final wording? You got it. <laughs> no, I mean without all the change. I it's mean, going to Tim to do. Tim will do it. Okay. We, we can okay. provide you with a copy of that. Yeah, that would, oh, yeah. okay. It's gotten really confusing. Okay. Yeah. What are you showing me? That, that way we'll be sure it that is. it's been legally oh. sanctioned. And I haven't seen one. Okay. okay. All right, Mr. McClung. I just have one comment, and that is just I'm not just not quite comfortable with the with the the wording on the uh, ownership and management as it is worded in there. So that's just I want everybody to look at that part of it. Are you talking about the planning? No, I'm talking yeah for the for the bed and breakfast, the tourist lodging. For the oh. Okay. T Terry, what is it that, that you don't agree with? Or, or you're well, uncomfortable with? I just don't know that the change is really necessary. You know, on, on as, as far as, you know, the, on the, the occupy, the, of, of occupying, you know, by the management, or the owner, you know, that differentiation, the, it seems to be more restrictive than what it has in the past, and I'm not so sure that that's, that that's all that good, because I still believe that there should be, you know, out-of-town owners and, and... Right, right, but what we want, Terry, is if, if it's not the manager's legal place of living, then it becomes tourist lodging, and, and that's the problem that we've had. We've got about four of them in town that quote unquote kind of have a manager there's nobody there the guests are floundering around looking for somebody or there's parties and problems and so that's what the citizens ask us they they don't want any more tourist lodging they want these B&Bs to be absolutely maybe. yeah and so that's that's why but I think uh, but I think that it's it's already covered pretty much as it existed but We'll let Mr. Weaver look at it. And okay. We'll, we'll yeah, we we group. we just put that in there as a manager must show proof or or, or that he really lives there and and you know because that's that's the reason of the bed and breakfast was to have someone living there. Sure. And it's just gone awry in the last few years, and we're we're really the planning commission is struggling. You know, we revoked one CUP. We've Every year we bring in about 10 of them for revocations and you know we usually can work something out with them but that's that's not right you know and we don't you know we voted tourist lodging out in 2001 because of no owners there so that's why we made it a little more restrictive but yes have Tim look at it and if there's something we can change we'll be glad to do it Mr. McClung. Right, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Yes. I have a question. Uh, we have a friend here in town that goes out to Oregon every year for a month mm -hmm. and manages a and b while his friend there goes on Sure, vacation. sure. I know who you're talking about. He's not a legal resident out there, so what but, would, could that happen here? Somebody um, could come in for a month and help out? Well, yeah, we're, what we're talking about, we're not trying to restrict anybody. They go on vacation, they hire someone. Hopefully that person stays there when there is guest. What we're doing is if someone owns a B and B, lives out of state and hires a manager, it's not just a renter that's not doing anything. It's just a body there. We we want somebody that's responsible for this business in a residential area. If if does that make sense? Well, I understand your intent, and if mm -hmm. you can write it so that you 
Hit yeah, we could we could put in there a temporary manager or something, but we're we're trying to get where these B and Bs have someone that is on site managing and being responsible for these places. And yes, you know we do have people that go on vacation, and no, I don't want to make it hard that they can't hire someone to come in and babysit it for a month or two. Well, it's just to add in your definition under a manager. Okay. Okay. And then that would take care of that. Okay. If you'll send that back to us, we'll we'll gladly. Just, but we're sending it to the mayor by motion here for vote on. I mean, yeah. send okay. it to the lawyer. Okay. Yeah. We'll T just, Tim, we'll could you come up with something for us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. Any further discussion? Okay. All right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. Can you give that to Tim, please? All right. Uh, <coughs> all right, that uh, takes care of that under new business, food truck lottery for 2018. I think that Madam Clerk, is that your? Yeah. You want my motion to discuss? Get a motion to discuss? It's a motion to discuss. Second. Second. Okay. The um, the regs call for a mid-November lottery, and interestingly, the three people who put their name in the hat for next year are the same people who won last year I'll so I could pretend that, that I pulled this up and put it in a hat there are several of them but in actuality in category B which is Center Street from <coughs> Spring to German Alley the only contender is Travis Holloway at 64 Center <laughs> alright I'm putting it in the hat taking okay. it out and the winner is Yay! Um, do we not have any discussion here no 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 it's really just to vote I mean, to do the lottery. Okay. Then I'm going to add to the agenda for okay. this time. Okay. In category D1, which is the highway from the western city limit to the east city limit, there's one contender, and that is, drum roll, uh, Bill Reed at 116 East Van Buren. Yay! So he is the winner of that particular. <laughs> and the third... <laughs> Entry in uh, D2 from Highway 23 South to the Southern City Limit is Reese Lane at 132 Huntsville Road. Oh, lots Have of they them. done anything? Uh, they're about to. They didn't do anything last year. Correct. Okay. Where was this? I didn't hear. It's where <laughs> it's across from Brighton Sweep. Now it says Antique. Oh, okay. And the Bean Me Up Coffee Place is there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay. All right. Thank you kindly. Uh, all right. Uh, get a motion to discuss the majority vote for council and commissions. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, all right. This is. Um, I'm not sure who who wants to lead off on this. Mickey. Um. I am highly, highly confused. After watching the HDC meeting, the last one, I was like, what? <laughs> and I'm glad you're still here, Virgil. You have councils, commissions, boards, whatever, with an odd number so you don't have a tie vote on issues. So if you have seven people on a council or on a commission, it takes four votes of the amount of people on the commission, not the amount of people that are there. If two people are sick and you're down to five, it would still take four votes to pass something, not three. Okay? So my question is, from the city attorney, can you, maybe I have missed something, I've lost something, but to hear what Virgil said about counting, making the majority of who's there as opposed to membership totally threw me. 
So I'm asking the attorney, can you clarify what's going on? Because I'm lost. I can give you some guidance. Uh, the city council, this board, is required by state law to only accept passage of something by a majority of the whole. Okay. So okay. being That's a body membership. of six, it takes four. You cannot have four there as a quorum and vote three, it won't work. And that goes back to a Supreme Court case that was decided in 1920. And it actually goes back to language that goes back to the Constitutional Convention in 1867. Uh, Kirby's Digest, which was the laws that were in effect in the 1920s, uh, state very plainly, and the language is carried over into our current statutes in 1455-203 that requires a majority of the whole. Now, that language is specific to this body. I can't find something that says it's specific to commissions, although I've spoken in years past a couple of times because this issue comes up periodically. Boards are down a few members or whatever, and they want to know, can we pass something? I've spoken with the Municipal League, and they say the only safe thing in their past recommendations have, to me have been, it should be just like this board, a majority of the whole. So if there are eight members on the board, it would take five members. If there's seven, it would take four, no matter whether how many is there. Or if it's like the Parks Commission, what's the Parks got? Twelve now, I think? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it would take seven mm -hmm. to pass. The chairman of each of those boards bears their vote even though they are the chairman. So if it's a seven member board, including the chairman, the chairman has a vote, according to the Municipal League. Just as in this instance, the mayor's not a member of the council, but he specifically made a voting member when there is his vote needed to pass an issue. And that comes straight out of the statutes also. Right. He can't vote in the negative. Now, the chairman, as a member of those boards, and the way the municipal league has instructed me in several CLEs and in several instances of just talking to them, is that a chairman can vote in the negative because they are an actual member of the body. The mayor, the clerk, and myself are not direct members of your board. And that's why the mayor's vote is somewhat secondary. He can only vote to, to, for actual passage of an issue. He can't vote against it. Right. But by not voting, it that would be it. fails anyway. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but the way the, the, the municipal league has told me repeatedly, what they're doing is probably needs to be corrected. They need to be voting majority of the whole rather than majority of the present. Okay, Virgil. Yes. Where was it you said you read the thing about you could do it, what you guys just passed? Uh, yes. Um, all I needed to do was ask for the documentation. Ask Lena Booth, who provided me the documentation from planning. And uh, uh, Ms. Stryker, I asked for what city council went by. She said Robert's rules. Uh, I didn't know, of course, all this that Mr. Weaver's uh, telling us. And in Robert's rules, we read in our meeting. And we also, uh, from Ms. Super uh, and from Christian Super, we got uh, parks. Uh, and so we read all those. And in Robert's rules, it stated votes cast. Uh, uh, excluding blanks. Uh, of course, that is different than what our state law apparently says. Uh, and 
with votes cast excluding blanks uh, is essentially the same as members present. You can't cast a vote if you're not there. Uh, what Glenna Booth provided me uh, on plannings actually says uh, members, we, we read ours straight from, we amended no words, and mm -hmm. it, from plannings from what Glenna provided me, uh, says on members present, on, on commissioners present. In the yeah, documentation, I've never, I've never heard, and I've been on planning like four times. But she but she emailed it to me. Before. She said Doug Britling uh, 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 penned it, and that it was a new change that okay, he well, that, that Doug Britling had written for planning. Okay, so from what the city attorney has said, state law declares how we will do it, mm -hmm. and state law supersedes. Yeah, we, we, so, we were going on the documentation we were provided okay, uh, when well, we were voting in commission, and just, so uh, obviously so it's confused. limited to uh, yeah, it's limited compared to what Mr. Weaver is telling us. Uh, uh, so we were just purely going by the documentation okay, so you're have provided to go back and by the. Change it then, I assume. Uh, if that's the way council, if council votes for us to, well, uh, if, if not, I, I think also. I think all the, personally, I think all the commissions should be the same. Uh, also, the quorum sizes are different for the commissions, too, and I think they should be the same. The quorum sizes, like for parks, is three from the uh, information I was provided. And it might, might have been old information. It was information given to Mr. Super. Quorum strictly is one over half. So to speak. The number three is written in the documentation that's provided me. I'm not saying the correct documentation was provided to me. I'm just saying where well, I, I got it from and, 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 and who got part. it. Uh, that the, the information provided to me by Parks, and it might have been something old when the quorum was smaller. And I'm just saying that was pro what was provided oh, to me recently what said okay. that a, the quorum of three was written in there. Uh, and I'm not saying I was provided the most accurate point. information. I just <laughs> was given the information as of recent, and that's the information I went by. Okay, so, I, so I'm guessing, Tim, basically what Virgil is saying is he was given documentation that showed many years ago when we had much smaller commissions and they actually said what the number was as opposed to the majority thing. Do we need to change anything or just restate it's the majority by one? I don't think it really personally matters which way it is. I just think they all ought to be the same. Well, that's what I'm saying. It would have to be, have to be worded, wouldn't it, as how the state says it, a majority by one. I think by definition, quorum is the majority. Right. So I think if it uses the word quorum, even though it uses a number, the term itself would exclude the number. Okay, but so. If the number is incorrect. But it wouldn't be quorum of those present, it would be quorum of the, the whole. Of the, of the whole. 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 Right. Which would fix the issue. Yeah. Right. Got it. Okay, so state says now, quorum of the whole. Yeah. Okay. Now. As I said, the state statute that we're actually looking at here, or that I actually looked at here, is this body. Sure. It does not specifically say commissions and committees, but municipal. the Municipal League suggested it repeatedly to me, and I'm repeating their suggestion that it probably should be the majority of the whole on all Basis. Okay, so do we need to make an ordinance in addition to the handbook? What do we do to make sure all of our commissions are, are a quorum, which is a majority of the whole? We could make a very short ordinance that address that. Said okay. all commissions, all departments, all committees. Okay, then I make a motion that we ask our city attorney to do an ordinance clarifying quorum of the whole for all Eureka commissions. Is that good? Tim? It will work if that's okay. what this body wants. Second. Okay. Discussion, Bob? Well, I actually got confused <laughs> earlier tonight <laughs> because you, to me the word quorum means when you start your meeting you have to have a majority of people there. Mm -hmm. But you use quorum when, when, the, when a vote is taken. The vote was a quorum. I, I've never heard that. Yeah, it's on both. Well, no, I'm not necessarily using it that way, except in the way that they're now voting. They're now voting a majority of the quorum, those present. A majority of the quorum. Yeah. Not, not a quorum vote. A not a quorum, of the quorum. Yes. Gotcha. And I'm suggesting 
the, what the municipal league has told me for years, and what state right. statute says for this body, correct, it should be a majority of the whole rather than a majority of the quorum. Okay, that, I, you just confused me earlier this evening. With it is. Quorum. It's really weird. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? Anyone? I I just would like. I'm not sure. I don't like to get into controlling the commissions with ordinances, but I would like to point out that Robert's rules, when it talks about uh, majority of the membership, majority of members present, and majority of members voting, it goes on down at the bottom to say that when you have a small commission, and Robert says less than 10, you should always have vote by majority of the membership because you've already limited your representation for the citizens. What's the, the definition of a membership? Mm -hmm. Is that the person by, on the commission? By, yeah. Is that by a, the whole or the members that are that are there? If you have one resign, the membership is now five instead of six. No, the membership is six. It's two who got one name. That you're talking about the whole, the right? Mm -hmm. Membership yeah. of the whole. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so. Again, let's make sure we're all talking sure. on the same page. Sure. Well, I mean, it, it's nice if people do things because it's right. I mean, if we have to have an ordinance, we'll do an ordinance. But I, I just hate to start controlling commissions. I wish they would realize that they need to make their representation as large as, as they possibly can, which is the membership, the total membership. Of the whole. I got it. Of the whole. Got it. Okay. I Having understand done what this you said. for 15 you, years, you this talk. issue's come up three or four times, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it probably wouldn't hurt to have it codified that way. Each oh, time a right. each time a commission comes up with the issue, they don't have to scurry around and try to come right. up with the answer. It'll be there in black and white. So can okay. we do that? Can we do that for all commissions? Yes, we that's, should. Do that's it. what my motion was. All commissions in your area. FPC, you can tell all commissions. Them. Okay. Boards, chairs, however we have to list them all. Okay. okay. Any further discussion? They're all subject to this board. Right. They're all created by this right. board. Right. They're all governed by it. Okay. So okay. commissions and boards. Is that how I should specify it, Tim? I'll go back and look and see if we have anything else that qualifies, but I think, <laughs> okay. I think commissions and boards probably okay. cover it. Yeah. <laughs> Would that also include committees? Committees? They aren't official. Are generally, like the mayor has a couple of committees yeah. and things, those are typically not ones that can promulgate rules. Uh, rules. rules. Okay, got it. And regs. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, would the current commissions need to vote to remove their current guidelines, or would this just supersede and replace automatically? I think once passed, it will supersede. Okay. And, and I once would, passed, uh, would the city council provide those changes if so passed? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So moved. Okay. Uh, get a motion to discuss the resolution for the two hour so we'll parking. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All right. Discussion? Nope. Terry will make that motion. I'd like to make a motion that, that we uh, assign this resolu resolution a number and read it for passage. Second. All right. A roll call. Why? Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yep. Ms. Adamson? Uh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. 5 0. The resolution number will be 718. A resolution removing the requirement of paying the parking meters on Spring Street and Main Street and establishing free two-hour parking from December 1 through December 31, 2017. Whereas the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, in an effort to promote business for the city during the period of December 1 to December 31, 2017, desires to establish free two-hour parking on Spring Street and Main Street for on-street metered spaces in Eureka Springs during the period of December 1 through December 31, 2017. 
Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of Eureka Springs, Arkansas that Section 1. Free two-hour parking is established on Spring Street and Main Street in metered spaces in Eureka Springs during the period of December 1 to December 31, 2017. All right. So moved. All right. Uh, discussion on uh, Christmas and Spring Street, I guess. Motion to discuss. Oh, so moved. Second. No second? Discussion, guys. Second. Oh, second. <laughs> second. You don't have to. I'm pulling your leg. Well, though. I'm just I'm <laughs> All right. assumption somebody else always does it. <laughs> um, <laughs> we were waiting for you, Bob. It's okay. your turn. <laughs> <laughs> what this is, is we received an application from uh, Jackie Woven and uh, representing Main Street. Uh, they wanted to, uh, as part of the second... Uh, Saturday gallery stroll uh, and in conjunction with uh, some of their Santa in the park uh, create a holiday night market of uh, craftsmen um, and artists selling wares uh, from enclosing Spring Street from Center Street to Mountain uh, from 4 to 10 p.m. and having the living windows uh, on Spring Street. Part of this <coughs> and of course uh, we've talked about this with other uh, department heads, uh, and we had some issues, uh, you know, making sure that if this is what it is, it's going to eliminate the parking, and in where the parking is, they will have booths set up along Spring Street from Center Street up to basically the New Orleans Hotel. Not any farther. Mm. Uh, the street would still be barricaded, uh, allowing still would have trolleys being able to go up through the street, uh, although the trolleys stopped running at 5 o'clock on there. Uh, we would have people, and part of the uh, deal is that uh, Main Street uh, would have, part of their volunteers would be manning the, the barricades to give directions on telling people where to go and where to go and how to park and how to get around. Uh, the first thought at some of the people, I've had three people who are really against it. Uh, most, some of those were the ones farther on up Spring Street, uh, don't have any vendors in front of them. Also, all the merchants have as first option of moving into the street and setting up their own booth if they want. So it's not just coming in and somebody else setting up in front of them. They have the option of doing this. Uh, several of the galleries uh, said, well, our business retail has been so bad, but we're willing to try it to see what happens, see if it works, uh, including uh, Zarks, Tim Hilty, uh, the um, girls that have the nut uh, factory in the, that big area, uh, several other shops in through there and on Spring Street. Uh, although, as I said, with, there's two or three who are afraid that this is going to cut into their business uh, and make it even worse. Uh, but again, this is um, starting in the late afternoon, uh, and that's uh, we've been kind of negotiating with uh, Jackie Woven on this. Uh, I went ahead. I did approve this back in September, but I was I was wasn't aware of all the ramifications on it. So we recently got into uh, discussion more so about this. And, and I sent out a personal email to all the business owners uh, along Spring Street letting them know of what exactly was going on. So, Mickey. Okay, and this is where the confusion comes in. And according to the email that Jackie sent out to the to the merchants it is not the second Saturday thing it's December 2nd which is the first Saturday in December and it's shutting down Spring Street on that Saturday from 1 till 10 not 5 till 10 so there's no tie into the second Saturday walk it's for twice as long um, 
And this was apparently, and boys, maybe you can help me on this. This was approved by the CAPC to mm -hmm. shut down Spring Street and council was never talked to? No, the CAPC never just That's what never her letter says. No, That's what no, her letter, her letter says. doesn't say that. Her, yes, letter, it does. her letter says, do you have a copy of that letter? I've got the email thingy at home. It says the, the CAPC has already letter, done the advertising on this. The letter I saw said that the CAPC was doing advertising. Had it been doing say, it for a month, yes. didn't say that they were shutting it down. Had this been is doing the advertising for the shutdown of the street, for this event. They're advertising the event. It's, it's what okay, the... Okay, uh, well that would have to include the 1 to 10 and everything else. This is why I've been getting phone calls from the merchants. Because they got her letter and it's saying they're gonna, we're going to shut down basically for the day. Now it does say in Jackie's letter that the merchants have the option of having a vendor in front of them or not. But we were never informed, asked, permitted anything in regards to shutting down Spring Street that time of the year, it's cold, it's dreary, people aren't and can't walk up there and stuff. Um, and like I said, then what you had, what you gave to me, Butch, is totally different from what her thing said. So now it's, it's totally two different events that are being talked about on two different days. The merchants have no idea anymore what's going on. Well, the, the merchants all received an email from me, David. I understand the confusion between Jackie and what you approved, and I think that's easily that can easily be fixed. And I'm pretty sure that you're going to be talking to Jackie tomorrow, and some exact, accurate presentation of this process will come out. But the issue of shutting down Spring Street came up, I think, in the, la the, the first time I got on council the first year or so. That had been about five years ago when Pate and I was in the last two years of it. And he had gotten with Sandy and there was that big thing where we were going to shut down all of Spring Street. And at that time there was discussion about, is this council shut down streets or does the mayor shut down streets? And if my memory is correct, and, and that's not a guarantee, but Tim weighed in on it and said that was a mayoral decision to shut down streets. Mm. It's not a council decision. And I've already had somebody ripping me a new one on <laughs> Facebook tonight about my memory. <laughs> but <laughs> that's fine. <coughs> but I, I'm still going to stand with it. I am positive that it's the mayor's decision to whether a street is shut down or not unless Tim has changed his mind. No, and I agree with that. But... Morris also did not do it because we were so against it. Well, he didn't get the support of the businesses and all at the time. Yeah, yeah. but again, that was, yeah, the that was our biggest weekend. But I, I think yeah. that maybe it's be resolved Memorial between weekend. the mayor and Jackie. Really well, the, and this yeah, is, on, it's, and Madam Clerk just pointed out to you, I didn't make, make it clear, and it had been confused. One of the rumors I heard was this was permanent. And it's only on the ninth. It's yeah, only that on was the, the second. Fear. Was that on the ninth? Right. Only on the second. See Saturday. now, here's my notes from you. What you told me the event was. Here's my notes from Jackie's email to the merchants. Yours is the ninth. Hers is the second. Yours is five to ten. Hers is one to ten. Actually, but it's four to right. ten. Hmm? Four to nine. So, so what I'm saying is, I've got two completely different set of notes from two completely that, different. The emails. application says four to ten. Thank you. She sent this out. The I application think in says four to ten. That's okay. all I'm saying. Okay. Well, she sent out. Now then you we need have to find out why she sent out okay. this other thing. All right. You wanted me to explain it, and I'm explaining <laughs> what was taken out. Okay. So are you going to talk to Jackie and get this squared away? Is I've been talking with Jackie and been talking and being able to talk okay, with a lot so of other people. What does the application say? What day? Two or nine? It actually says Santa and games for kids December 2nd and 9th. Oh, so it's, a, so it's two going. weekends? Holiday market, craftsman fairs on the 9th. That's the vendors in the street? That's on the night. That's I mean, that's is that the vendors? Yes. Street yes. clothing closing is on the night. It's on the night. The one time only. But one there's events only. two two Saturdays in a row. 
just not closing. It's no. It's there's activities going on on That's the what second. I'm there's Santa in the park. There's other activities going along, uh, but the closing of the Spring Street is on the ninth. That's the only time. So even that though is, they're having two weeks of events, that is the only, only time. one time. Okay, and it's one time only. This is what our people need to know. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? All right. Uh, okay, that uh, brings us to the agenda setting. Anyone? Mickey? Okay, I would like to add, um, wait a minute. Oh, okay. I would like to add a discussion of the food truck, is this an ordinance situation, whatever. Of the food truck situation, how's that? Food a discussion, ordinance. please. I can't, sorry. I don't want to hear it again. <laughs> I'm finished with it. I need two minutes to point some stuff out. They've had a year. A second. A second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, right, and and did, were the the uh, take action for the parks was that something we were supposed to put on the agenda? They were saying he said we needed to take action. Um, <sighs> Bill. And Justin, something that we were supposed to be telling them I to. Whatever it is. Huh? The city commissioner. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we need to, to do a that discussion of expanding the commission. Yeah, we can do that. When they, when they bring it up, we'll talk about it. It's in I their I thought they were implying that they had brought it up and now we, no, and we haven't. They haven't brought it up yet. Okay. Mr. Mitchell. Not taking Bob's thunder, but the, the issue that he had about wanting to re rescind his vote and then he has to do something for the next meeting, does that require being an agenda topic or does he have the freedom to do that? I'll be on the agenda topic. But it's up to him. I just tried to clear it up in my mind. It doesn't have to be on the agenda. I, you can do a motion to reconsider at any point in time. Okay. I just wanted to be sure. Thank you. Okay. Correct. Do no. you want it on the agenda? No, I, I can just make it whenever I'm okay. Well, we can also put it on right now. <laughs> it has to happen at the it's next meeting. To do. I know. It has to happen at the next meeting, though, Correct. right? Correct. Okay. All right. Anybody else? <coughs> All right. Comments, Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> I'm going to start with you. I, you know, I think I'll better just be quiet. Mr. Mayor. I have a comment that's not really that significant. I know Peg has a significant comment. Could she please go last and let the rest of us get out of the way? <laughs> Hers is much more important than I don't than think she's going available. to tonight, are you? I think we're all I think we're all important mm -hmm. in this case. Everybody's important. Well, I, everybody's important, but what everybody has to say is just ask, just well, ask to I go think, last, I like I do. We'll all get there. We're we're here. Okay. Okay. Mickey. Um, I want to congratulate all the voters last week from coast to coast, the whole nation. We did had a national election that I think has broken all boundaries. The people voted in, and I'm talking the whole nation, they voted in blacks, whites, men, women, gay, lesbian, and transgender. Is there anything we're missing like purple people or something? I think they have voted in from coast to coast every single kind of breakdown that you could possibly have. There's a zillion different religious breakdowns in that group too. I think this is awesome for America. Thumbs up to us. That's it. Thank you. That right, peg. Okay. Um, I have to make an announcement. Uh, I have to vacate my uh, position on city council. This is a national Alzheimer's Awareness Month, 
and I have to attend to a family member who has some dementia, uh, quite a bit of it. And I'm, I don't know how long I'll be gone, so I don't want to hold up the business of city council. So I am resigning my uh, position on city council by December 31st, 2017. Um, <clears throat> with that, the happy news is, all of you who want to be on city council, put in an application tomorrow to take this Within position. Ward 2. In Ward 2. In Ward 2. Can't you make it for the first meeting in January? What is it? Just that, what do you do? Make it known. Just make it known that you want to be on city council. I had to fill something out, I thought, for when your, Joyce died. Your situation... No, no. You, just okay. made, you just made it known. Okay. Um, I am... Um, I love Eureka Springs, and I am really sad about having to do this. Um, there's so much going on, um, and I, I just don't even how to, know how to express how wonderful it's been for people to elect me to this position. It's just been fabulous, and I consider so many people my friends. It's just awesome. Um, with that, I also wanted to mention that one of the best things that happened this weekend was the Five of Dime Collective um, had six, six plays that were just, it was an ensemble community event and I loved it. The people came, people were in the play, it was awesome. So thank you for letting me serve. I continue to be uh, in the United State of Eureka and um, try to help out the city and try to get on to city council. You'd be here for a year. It'd be awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're not going to let you go. I'm sorry. We're going to chain you to your chair. No, no I, I have no comment. Mr. McClellan? No, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Um, Peg, you'll be missed. You've, you've been a great asset to the city council. Um, Sorry that you, uh, the situation has come up where you have to resign, and, and uh, but I understand your obligations and your duties to your family and, and everything. Uh, thank you very much from thank you from me, and and I know I say the same for the for the city. Uh, anytime somebody gets up and and uh, dedicates their time and volunteers their time and and. Um, puts their phone calls and phone numbers out to the public, uh, deserves a pat, and uh, it's a, it's a thank you very much. Thank you. You I get a, a special star. I have a question. Um, you say by December 31st? Or as of midnight? As of midnight, December 31st, I've resigned my, my city council. So you will be on council until, until the end then. of the year. Exactly. Therefore, the vacancy will not be effective until Jan January, January 2018. That's, that's yep. really important. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I was advised to say December 31st at midnight. Well, I just wanted to make sure when people call me tomorrow, <laughs> I can answer the question as to when yep. the vacancy not, will be. Not enough. tomorrow. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. No, I'm um, not worry about the election part. <laughs> all right. So the items also we got. Um, oh, okay. Coming up in uh, November 17th through the 19th is Antique Festival of the Ozarks from 5 to 8 uh, on Friday and from 9 to 5 on Saturday and 10 to 4 on Sunday at the end of the Ozarks. Uh, on the 23rd of November, we have the Don Gammy Turkey Trot uh, <laughs> race at, from 8.30 to 11 out at Lake Leatherwood or Leatherwood Park. And then on the 24th of November through the 26th, we have the 5th Annual Great Ozark Beard Off. Uh, evening hours, awesome. venues around town. That's what Terry's so doing. Beard off. That's what Terry's What's the date doing. on that in case I <laughs> find a razor by the 24th? 24th through the 26th. <laughs> <laughs> and on the 25th, Santa arrives at Basin Park from 1 to 3. And uh, on the 25th, we also got Shop Small Saturday at 1 to 3 in the Basin Park. And also, I think uh, the council probably is aware of it, but we're going to have a uh, ADA self-assessment uh, plan review workshop on December the 5th at 3 p.m. And uh, we'll be getting you 
a very thick packet of uh, ADA wow. uh, assessment that we've done. Yes, so. uh, nothing else? We can get a motion yeah, to adjourn? All in favor? Aye. 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 Who was the second? Uh, Bob. Were you the second? Bob, Bob, Bob was the second. He was the loudest. Terry did. Oh, you moved it? No. Oh, I'll second it. Oh. Bob is the second. Okay. <laughs>